Hello, hello. Welcome to another week of the 99% Local Podcast. Go subscribe to this podcast on all podcast platforms. Well, maybe not all of them, maybe just your favorite. Well, heck, go subscribe on all of them. And while you're at it, go to iTunes and leave me a five-star review. I would greatly appreciate it. Oh, we're also on YouTube now, so go check that out. As always, drop me a line at 99%localpod at gmail.com or visit the website at 99%localpod.com. I have something really special coming up for the next two weeks of shows. Two back-to-back shows focused on literacy and reading in Middle Tennessee, but more about that in a few minutes. Did you know last month, September, was National Literacy Month? Yes, September is gone, but on November 1st, National Family Literacy Day is observed. Celebrated across America, this day focuses on special activities and events that showcase the importance of family literacy programs. So on November 1st, get together with your family and read a book together. Use the hashtag Family Literacy Day to post on social media. So I'm going to throw some other statistics at you before we get to today's show. Did you know according to the American Academy of Pediatrics, reading proficiency by third grade is one of the most important predictors of whether a student will actually graduate high school and succeed in a career. Yet, according to a study by the U.S. Department of Education, even 32 million adults in the U.S. still can't read. Parents and caretakers can help by encouraging reading at all ages, instilling a love of reading and writing practices as part of daily life. For younger children, just sit down together regularly and read a book out loud. Did you know that you can also donate books to community book drives, libraries, and organizations that support literacy? One study found that in middle-income neighborhoods, there are 13 books per child, while in low-income neighborhoods, there is one book for every 300 children. Not good. Researchers with the Economic Policy Institute have found that when low-income parents read to their children from an early age have books in the home, and visit the library, their children have higher literacy skills. Now, for today's show, I have Brittany Shaw, who is running a platform called Hidden Story 615, or what she would call Books for the Community. Hidden Story 615 supports reading. You, yes you, deserve a good book. What about free books hidden for you to find? Think of Hidden Story 615 as a scavenger hunt, or... Maybe geocaching for books, if you will. Hidden Story 615 exists to support reading in the community through free books to help readers engage with the resources in the community. It's also here to promote and support local authors. And on a side note, next week's episode features one of those authors who is a best-selling children's author from right here in Middle Tennessee. So let's get right into it. Here is my conversation with Brittany Shaw with Hidden Stories 615. All right, so I have Brittany Shaw here. She is running a cause called Hidden Story 615. Do you just want to start by telling me what is Hidden Story 615? Hey, yeah, of course. Um, Hidden Story 615 is a literacy initiative to bring books to the community for free for all ages, and the books range in all genre and all topics. Um, My goal is just to get books in people's hands. Okay, but you're doing this in a unique way. Do you want to kind of talk about how that works? To me, it's almost like a a scavenger hunt in a way. Yeah, so it is like a scavenger hunt. Um, I get a cool new book from an author or a publisher, and I promote it on the Instagram account, Hidden Story 615. Um, And then when it's hidden, either in town or in a cool building, then I'll post clues along with the picture of the book of where it's located. I'll tag the location um, and people can go find it. Yeah. So how how frequently do you do that? Is that something you do every day, weekly? So we're going on about the third month now of running Hidden Story 615. Um, And I've kind of gotten into a rhythm of maybe once or twice during the week. And almost every weekend, I'll have the opportunity to drop a couple of books in different places. Um, 
I'm still trying to get a flow <laughs> if there's like a certain day of the month I should do it. But um, I've just been trying to do it when I can or when an author or a publisher requests a certain location or a date, I can do that as well. Okay. So, so we'll talk more about that, but let's take a step back. So, so where are you located and where are you doing this at? I live right outside of Franklin. I live in Leapers Fork um, with my family, and I'm doing this in mainly the Williamson County area. So not just Franklin, Tennessee, but also outside of Franklin. We'll go to Brentwood. We'll go to Cool Springs. Um, sometimes we'll be in Nashville. It's just for everybody in our community. Yeah, cool. So, so do you have your whole family involved in doing this? Yeah, I've, I've kind of dragged them along on this. <laughs> so it's my husband and my two kids. And when we're out hiding books, they'll see a cool spot or something for a cool picture. And they'll definitely help me out. Um, my husband will lug the big tote of books and keep it loaded in the car. <laughs> so yes, it's, it's all of us together. Yeah. So I, I, looking at your Instagram page, you know, you have a link on there. It goes to uh, a couple links that caught my eye. Williamson County Library System. Um, are you, do you have like a partnership with them or what's the, what's the correlation there? Or is it just to, um, you know, support, support literacy and support reading? Yeah, so I do not have anything going on with them. I would love to help work a program through them. That would be a great thing. Um, but just for now, you know, I want to have that link there. So if people want a book, but they don't know how to get it, I have a link there for them that I can direct them to and say, hey, right here is where you can sign up for your library card. This is your first step. Um, there's, you know, kids programs at the library, there's adult programs, there's something for everyone. So I just want to make sure that since I'm supporting books and literacy that my local library is also included in that. Yeah. So, so how or why did you start this? Do you have a background in teaching or? I have a background in being really obsessed with books. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I read a lot on my free time. I listen to hours of audiobooks a month. Um, I, always in finding new books for my kids to read and I'm reading them to them. And I've just forever been a book lover and a book nerd. So that's my personal background. Um, and just some more about me and reading in an average year, I read like a hundred to 150 books. So I love seeing what's new or reading a classic. And um, I've been able to also become a reviewer of books through different programs that are available. So I've gotten books before they're published or books for free from authors to review. Um, and sometimes I get more books than I can handle. So I wasn't obligated to review them, but I would donate them to my library and they were like, well, we can't really do anything with this book. It's not published yet, but someone else could read it. So I want to be able to give the books to people that I get. Yeah, great. So I see, you know, just looking at your Instagram, it looks like you have a lot of books donated by in local authors. And I think you mentioned this, um, like, so are you working with uh, just local authors, pub book publishers or? So I want to work with any author and any publisher, um, whether it's independent, self-published or a big mainstream publisher. I will work with anybody from any area, but I do also want to showcase our people here in Tennessee that are local um, writing just down the street and share their books so we can, you know, do some love of our community. So I have connected with a good handful of local authors and I've been able to share their books. They've sent me multiple books to share with the community and it's great. I'm getting more every day. Um, and through that, I've also connected with um, a local publisher that's got a publishing house in Nashville. Um, and I've got some great connections that I've just been growing with so far. And it's, it's really amazing that, you know, authors want people to read their books. So if I'm going to give books to people and help promote for the author yeah. and, you know, put their name out there, it's just great for everyone. 
I wanted to take a moment out of my conversation to tell you about Framed Comics. You can find them on Instagram at, at framed underscore comics. Framed Comics is comic books framed as art. It's a comic enthusiast and coincidentally the husband of Brittany Shaw, who is today's guest on the show, offering both complete and individual pages of real comic books framed in displays to be used as artwork. Framed Comics is based in Franklin, Tennessee, but again, they can be found on Instagram at framed underscore comics and also on Etsy at etsy.com slash shop slash shop framed comics. Let's talk about how someone would participate in this. So you already said you post the books to Instagram, which you have a lot up there. Um, do you do you post, you know, okay, here's the book, here's where it is, or do you give clues, or how's that work? Yeah, so to participate, there's, I guess there's kind of like three different parts. You can be someone that finds the books, you can be a finder. Um, to participate in finding books, the best thing is to follow the Instagram account. Um, when books come in from authors, I feature them. If you see something you like, you can comment and say, Hey, notify me when this book is hidden. I've been, um, when I do hide the book, I do post a notification for anybody who wants to know when that book is out there. Um, when the book does get hidden, I will post a picture of the exact spot that it's at. Um, and then a couple of pictures of the area. I'll also tag the location. So if it's at a park or at a Starbucks or at the post office, I'm going to tag that location and put some information in the description saying that this book is ready to find. Um, and, you know, good luck looking for it. Also, each book does have a bookmark inserted. So if someone comes upon the book and they have no idea what the Instagram account is, um, the bookmark says some information to direct them to the Instagram account to help the author get some um, get some traffic. And the bookmark says that they can choose to keep the book for themselves. They can gift the book to somebody or they can leave the book for someone else to find. Um, and then I always hope everybody will post what they find and share it on Instagram. I've got a hashtag that they can use and be featured um, in the stories as well. Yes, I see that. It's hashtag hidden stories 615. Yes. No, th that is so awesome. Um, there's also, let me ask you about this. You have a Barnes & Noble wish list linked to Instagram. What's that about? Yeah, so people want to participate and donate a book, um, but they're not an author. Or they're a small business and they want their business to be promoted as, we donated a book. Go check out Hidden Story 615. So um, if, they don't, if they're not a bookseller, if they don't have books in their store, they can go to this Barnes & Noble wish list. And I've just kind of added a couple of books of each genre, but really anybody can pick any book that they may want to share. Um, and that will come directly to me. I would love to have a partnership with our local booksellers, um, the stores here in Franklin and then in Nashville. I would love to work something with them where if someone wants to buy a book and leave it there and I'll pick it up, that would be awesome. Um, but for now, this is what I'm working with, Barnes Noble wish list, um, as suggestions of what people can choose if they're, you know, if it's not their book, if they don't know what to choose. Yeah. So how do you how do you choose what books you want to share? Is it just all all different genres, all different ages? Yeah. So it's I reach out to authors of all different genres, directed to any age group, um, and then like on the wish list, I do try to add a little bit of each age group to kind of give an idea of what kind of books are new and what books are coming out. Um, a diverse range of books as well. So I, I want a book for everybody. I've got baby board books that I've been able to hide. And then I've got ad adult like mystery romance thrillers. So I've got a little bit of everything. When you're not so indulged in books, what are you typically doing <laughs> in middle Tennessee, either you or your family? Well, because this isn't this isn't the only thing you do. So right. yeah, some days it feels like it is, but I have a I have a job. <laughs> I get to work from home, thankfully, but I have a job. I work for corporate America um, to pay the bills, but this is what I do for fun. I like to read. Um, my family, we live in Leapers Fork and really 
once we are out of our busy week routine, once we get to relax, we just love, you know, doing stuff around town. There's always something to do. We got, went to a comic book event convention like two weeks ago. And then last week we went to Lucky Lad Farms. And then this upcoming weekend, we're going to Mistletoe Farms with all the alpacas. <laughs> and we're so excited. Um, but we just love to explore around the town, around our city, and just do stuff together, get out of the house. Um, we love the outdoors. We love going to big parks and experiencing different things. Cool. Yeah, I, that's very apparent because you, you post a lot of local events on your Instagram as well. Yes, yes. I do that because I want everybody to know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so let's uh, – is there anything else that – you know, that's relevant that you think we should talk about? Um, as long, um, or along with the participating, you know, so I've, I went over how to find books, how to donate books. I've also got my, my group for authors and publishers, um, on how to participate. You know, if an author wants to email me at hidden stories, six one five at gmail.com and get more information, they can, I'd be happy to share their work, no matter who it's directed towards. Um, same mm -hmm. for publishers. Um, I reach out to authors on Instagram. So if you've received a message from me, go ahead and reply. <laughs> but I, I reach out to a lot of authors. Um, it's really cool seeing them promote their work and I want to help them. So um, that's how authors can participate. Just reach out and I would be happy to share their book with the community. Yeah. So, so can you tell us some of the authors locally that you work with or that donate yes. books to? So um, the very first local author I got to work with is Amy Parker. Um, you can find her uh, at Amy Parker books on Instagram. She has written so many stories stories for children and her books are extremely great quality and they're so involved um and i was going through my son's library and i realized since he was like three before i even did this <laughs> a long time ago we have one of amy's books and he loves the book and it's something we read oh, wow yeah it's something we read yeah. often um and i've been able to get to know her i got to hang out with her and she has a few more books that are coming out and I'll get to hide some of those soon and feature those soon. And it's been really cool meeting her. Um, another local author is Jennifer Moorman. Um, and you can find her on Instagram as well. I've shared a couple of her books so you can see her featured um, in some of my most recent posts actually. Um, and she is a romance contemporary with a little bit of magical elements in her stories and they seem so cool i can't wait to read them myself um let's see who else has been local those are my main two right now um i've got a couple of self-published authors who are not working through big publishing houses um, that i've been able to share their books as well and that's that's good too Great. So as we wrap up here, let's, uh, so can you just share your Instagram again? Yes. So you'll find me on Instagram at hidden stories, six one five. Great. And you got like 630 followers. So hopefully we can uh, get that to increase a little bit and get more people involved in what you're doing. Yeah, that would be awesome. I want everybody in the community to one day find their own book. I don't plan on stopping anytime soon. <laughs> well, awesome. Thank you, Brittany. Thank you. Thanks for having me.